Sorry, finish your grit. What's that? Grit? Oh, you going Mexican. Shit. How y'all doing? Uh, Nelly and Danelli? Oh, I'm sorry. How you doing? Sorry. What are you laughing at? No, it's a good laugh. It's a good laugh. You know, it's a, uh, number seven. You want to sit down? <laughs> yeah, sit down. You're, you're number 10 on the list. Well, hi, how are you? Hi. Ma'am, you dropped this. I'm sorry. That's her business, okay? All right? Maybe she got PMS this month. All right? Oh, you have it too? Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, Jenny Craig's daughter. Can we have a hand for Jenny Craig's daughter? And how much weight did you lose, ma'am? Did your mother make the pay? Huh? What? Let's get over here. What's brother seeing? What's this? Is that good? Huh? Huh? Have you had some? No. Have you had any this month? No. How you doing, everybody? It's good to see you. My entourage in the back. We have the finest talent in the house. We have Veronica Carter. Let's hear it for Veronica Carter. We have Alex Elias. Let's hear it for Alex. We have Rhea Coyne and Nebraska here tonight. Both of them, right Rhea? Yeah! They're both here. She blew them up for tonight. What you got there? Ooh. Oh, you did go with the chip lamp. No. It's what? Fish? Oh, you guys eat fish. Okay. No, uh, my name is Mike, Mike Devine, and uh, I'm going to be kind of helping Todd out tonight. <laughs> What's the joke? Oh, your life, Mike. You wish, Eric. Eric, uh, I got that number of Jenny Craig. Could you get it before you leave tonight? Then I'll get it from her daughter. Anyway, let's get on with the show. I've had enough. Okay. We're bringing on someone tonight that you... It's probably your worst nightmare. Everyone's worst nightmare. Besides me. Besides me. Besides your mother, sir. Anyway, I'd like, I'd like to bring on to the stage... Uh, I think he's from Puerto Rico. Where are you from? Puerto Rico? King Abla, what? See? See? Oh, okay, he's fueling up. Anyway, he's a very funny comedian. He, he was star of Dangerous Comedy. <laughs> That's an inside joke. <laughs> anyway, uh, what's your name? What was your name? Oh, I forgot your name. That funny Puerto Rican. What's your name? I forgot your name. Wait. Bill. Bill Maricone? Bill, Bill Maricone. Ladies and gentlemen. No, what's your name? I forgot your name. Bill Flores. Ladies and gentlemen. Bill Flores. Thank you. Let's give a big hand to uh, Susie. Uh, <laughs> Debbie Dixon. Tiffany. Hey, what's up? I'd like to start off with something provocative. Uh, what I'm going to do is, my first trick is, kiss every single girl on the mouth. Until I get kicked in the ball. Ready? Let's begin. Boom! Ladies and gentlemen, once again proving... Okay. And gentlemen, a little X-rated mind. X-rated mind, if you will. Season, ladies and gentlemen, I'm in auditioning for a movie. Who do I see 
This is Desmond Tutu, ladies and gentlemen, sitting next to me for a lousy under five part in Problem Child 2. Unbelievable. Then, right next door to me, this guy rents out this crummy little studio apartment. Who is it? None other than Hank Kissinger, ladies and gentlemen. Hank Henry Kissinger. I said, Henry, didn't you win a Nobel Prize for Peace? He said, no, I want the Golden Globe. All right, Henry, I understand. Then, I'm over at Universal Studios. Who's dropping off a picture and resume? Nelson Mandela. Unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. The Nelly, haven't you done enough? No, she wants to get a recurring role on the soap opera Santa Barbara. I said, I understand, Nelson. You get the chiseled features, you'll get the girl. Kiss, make a couple of hundred, go back to the movement. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a Latino, a Hispanic American. I know I don't look it, I know I don't sound it, but I'm the new breed of Hispanic. You know, I speak English. You know. Of course, I have the ripped leather jacket. You can only go so far in today's complex society. But, I'm a Latino. I love my people, the Latino people. I'm upset though because I just read Latino high school kids came in fifth on this scholastic test. Number one was a Chinese, number two were white, number three were black, number four were others. <laughs> we were number five. A whole race of people defeated by a pronoun. But it's okay though. Things are getting better. I look at the news. There's a lot of newscasters. Uh, have you noticed this? On the news, a lot of guys on the news, when they talk about Spanish countries, they pronounce them with Spanish accents. You know? Like instead of saying Nicaragua, they say Nicaragua. You know? They don't do this for other nationalities. They don't do this for the Irish. You never see a broadcaster get up there, Vice President. Well, how's just what? Northern Ireland. <laughs> they don't do this for the Jap. <laughs> They don't do this for the Japanese. Mr. Quayle is also on his way to Tokyo. <laughs> I want to teach you some Spanish now. It's very important uh, to pick up a couple of Spanish words besides maricón, pendejo, and culo. I think. <laughs> I think it's important to know a few other words. Let me teach you, let me teach you the alphabet. In the Spanish alphabet, two L's make the sound of a Y, like tortilla, right? Two L's is a Y. And in the Spanish alphabet, two X's is a beer. Exactly. Dos <laughs> X's, exactly. As a little kid going to school, you see the alphabet up on the wall. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, B, Q, R, X, C, U, V, W. Beer, Y, Z. It has like a bottle of beer on the wall. Beer, ladies and gentlemen. I've been watching uh, Spanish TV lately. We've got a lot of Spanish TV shows on like channel, uh, what's that, uh, channel 4080, channel 34, 39, 490. You know when you come into the Spanish station, by the way, when you pass the Iranian Home Shopping Network. Then you know. You know you're in the ballpark, you know. I was watching my favorite Spanish TV show, Spanish Street Company. Have you seen this Spanish Street Company? Como knocking on la puerta. Someone's waiting for usted. <laughs> Things are changing for minorities, though. Uh, for example, there is uh, Black History Month every February, which is a good thing, a whole month to honor people like Martin Luther King. We uh, have something coming up, too. It's not exactly a month, though. It's tomorrow, between 2 and 2.30, Hispanic History Half Hour. Yeah. <laughs> it's about 30 minutes to look at some old clips of Chico and the Man. But, <laughs> but it's something. Saw this football player on the Buffalo Bills. We've been watching a football lately. There's a guy named Shane Conlin. He's a linebacker. He was named after his father's favorite movie, Shane. I'm going to name my son after my favorite movie. His name will be Baseball Story. <laughs> if, I, if I'm lucky enough, if God gives me another child, it will be named Police Academy 3 Story. <laughs> I felt that Police Academy 1 and 2 were flawed and not quite as poignant as the third.
I love movies. You know, uh, I was in this ABC After School special. You might have seen it. Uh, it was called Mommy, Coach Touch Me. <laughs> I played the part of Coach. And I played the part of me, by the way. I touched me. Low budget film. <laughs> Seriously, I was in one of those like teen movies. I was in one of those teen movies. You see, you've seen this kind of movie before. It's the girl leaves the Midwest, right? Comes to Hollywood to become a star, right? Ends up doing porno. You've seen this movie a million times, right? But how come you never see the other side of this? How come you never see a girl born in Hollywood, raised in Hollywood, raised by a pack of wild prostitutes, okay? <laughs> Who then goes to the Midwest and then is abducted by some unscrupulous conniving Quakers and forced to lead a life of piety and introspection. <laughs> Why don't you ever see this? Because it's a shitty idea. But, ladies and gentlemen, when I think about movies, I was watching this movie with Glenn Close. She was naked. They did a close-up of her behind, and her behind looked like a very good behind. Glenn Close is a very fine actress, but she's a little bit, uh, you know, not a spring chicken. And uh, I find out later on that that was not her behind. I was seeing in the close-up they used another actress just for this part. In other words, they used a stunt ass. <laughs> stunt ass. How do you get a job as a stunt ass? Excuse me, I'd like to apply for the part of Robert De Niro's ass. Yeah, I was in taxi driver. Didn't you see me? Excuse me, you talking to me? You talking to me? Well, there's nobody else here. Oh. Think about movies, though. That old man gave me the light. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Motherfucker! <laughs> fuck your ass. <laughs> you fuck man. You up here killing and shit. Motherfucking white, frizzy hair motherfucker. <laughs> He's giving you the light and shit. It's embarrassing, bro. Check this shit out, man. You ever go to prison, right? You in prison and shit? And they come up to you, and like they start calling you an informant and shit, right? And then they throw you up against the prison fence, right? And then they start taking turns raping you and shit, man. That ever happened to you, man? <laughs> That's embarrassing, bro. You know, you getting raped by the warden and your parole officer. Meanwhile, it's Father and Mother's Day. Your parents are outside the prison fence watching you get raped and shit. That's embarrassing, bro. Well, that's all I have to do. Thank you. Good night. What's up? Eating rice around me? How you doing? Rice around me, the San Francisco tree. Excuse me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have one of the Van Patten children in the house tonight. Let's have a hand for what, what Van Patten are you, ladies? Edward. Edward, the one they don't talk about. Are we leaving? You gotta go? Oh, you gotta do something. Okay. <laughs> they both gotta do something. Okay. Let's get the show rolling right along. Uh, oh, yes. Our next uh, comedian. You've seen him. What, what, you, what have you done? You've seen him on RTD, you've seen him on America's Most Wanted, and perhaps you caught his latest picture on the side of a milk carton. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone's favorite bus driver and rider, Ed White. and all that kind of stuff. I had a great welcome for the new year. At last, I got rid of my damn bifocals. Fantastic. 
I went right over the lens grab there, and I had to put in a bifocal windshield in my car. It worked, absolutely. Okay, so I get a few complaints about headaches and dizzy spells and stuff like that. Like the other, the other night, there's this car coming down the road with the high beams on. It goes right past me. I hear this lady yelling out, Whoa, did you see the size of the head on that guy? Jeez. Right. And how about these new string bikinis, huh? Whoa, the girls really love them. They, well, and why the hell not? They love them for flossing and they love them for swimming. They try to put them around the back so they like to floss their panties when you're walking down the beach. I don't know what. All oh, right, so you didn't like that. Give me a chance. One out of ten ain't bad. I'm not keeping uh, score. Um, you know, all the fashion designers now are going for the, for the latest fabric. This is stuff that's made out of all the paper that's recycled. And it, it really works out good because they, they're now using this new fabric and it's great for people who travel a lot because now they can just fax their clothes to wherever the hell they're going. Think about that one for a while, if you will, but not too long, obviously. I was like, anyhow, where, uh, where was I? Um, oh, Jerry Lewis. Beloved comedian Jerry Lewis, he's working on another telephone, and as you probably know. Last time Jerry did one, he said he was on his feet for 52 minutes, absolutely. And yet, every hour on the hour, Jerry set his hair out to have a lot of oil change. Hey, nothing's too good for Jerry's kids. Nothing whatsoever. The thing that drives the living hell out of me is all these people who keep telling me to have a nice day. Give me a break. That's all I get is nice days. God damn it. At my age, I like to have just one good night night. And it's not what you think. I just like to have one night where you don't have to go to the damn bathroom 20 times in a row. Well, I told to get on and get off, so I got on. So now I'll get off. Here comes the MC. My name is Ed White. Enjoy yourself. Good night, everybody. As your butt is out front, I close the weight, so the weight out front there. You got your butt past that? Okay. Don't lose it. Okay. It's disabled. Okay. They're gonna they're gonna bring that ramp up, so you better get your wheelchair out. Okay. All right. I guess he's out of hearing too. Uh, hi. What are y'all doing here? Oh, chilly time. Stay away from you. Anyway, my next comic person is the first woman of the night, but I've been asked by someone who wants to introduce her because, well, actually it'll give her a chance to air her breast out because she's been complaining. And uh, so here, Rhea Coyne introducing Veronica Carter. Rhea? Michael said. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to tell you one thing. <laughs> See, the reason I'm here is because I'm going to be introducing Veronica Carter. <laughs> because, see, Michael introduced me and I introduced her and then someone can introduce someone else and then we can all do lunch. Do you like that? <laughs> that was like spontaneous. <laughs>
a great audience tonight. I mean, people, real ones, and black men. Make a bit of difference. A black woman dashed 
is up to me. Sometimes she leaps. <laughs> Black. 
black folk woman. Some hairy look. And when I really thought about it, I said, well, now, you know, I thought white folks were smart. But they're not that smart, because they couldn't possibly know what we black folks go through with hair. And when I really thought about it, I said, oh, it's just so true. Forget about the BMW. Forget about the BS degree. Just give us some hair to go. See this hair? This hair is 100% human Korean <laughs> white folk hair. <laughs> and it goes. See it? It goes over here and it goes over here. <laughs> now, this hair. Actually, just ordinary LA tap water. 